Hi, I'm Gem Scotland and I'm cooking today a nice, healthy, vibrant, uh, flavoursome Caribbean salmon rice bowl for dinner. Thought I'd introduce myself for those of you who might not know me. I, am, I have been a Weight Watchers member for the last, well, since October, um, so that's definitely over six months now. And if you hear the noise here, that's whiskey, my wee Westy, I'm a, I'm a proud dog mum, he's having a big drink of water something we should all be doing before we have something to eat. Um, anyway, so I'm cooking today partly because I wanted to share this really nice kind of cooking and I'm practicing doing a little bit of a food blogging. But I'm also doing it today because it was one of my goals from my Weight Watchers group meet, virtual Zoom meeting this week um, to try and get more focused with my meal planning and to have like somebody almost holding me accountable to that and that is going to be you guys. So I thought I'd share with you what I'm doing. Now, this is the first time I'm ever going to be recording what I'm cooking with a tripod. Um, so we'll see how we go on with this. There might be a few bits and pieces. Before I do that, just one last thing. Um, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, then please do. It's stapit.foo. So you're like stapitfoo. Stapit, S T A P P I T dot F U. And uh, yeah, and if you're watching it on Instagram already, well, you guys know how good the food is already. So anyway, let's check out what we're going to be making today. So the first thing I'd say is that this recipe is coming from the Weight Watchers app or website. So if you're a member, you should be able to access this. Now, just to flick around, I'll show you what the ingredients list is like. So I've got the majority of the ingredients, but I've made a few changes. So first of all, I don't have the jerk mar marinade. Um, I tend to buy my shopping just what I would normally buy in terms of raw ingredients, whole ingredients and make up uh, marinades and things like that by myself. Um, I also hadn't planned to do this when I did the shopping so please bear with me um, as I'm trying, it means I've got slightly more ingredients than, than is shown here. The other thing I've changed, swapped in, is the brown rice and the main reason for that is I bloomin' hate it and I refuse to buy it so it's just basmati rice for me so you'll have to obviously adjust points accordingly from that. Uh, a couple of other changes is that um, I don't have very many spring onions left over from this week's shop mainly because I have been cooking a lot of Korean food and it's in a lot of Korean food so I've had to try and reduce my quantities there. And the other thing is I'm quite short on chilies so I've made a little um, interesting substitution there perhaps not a Weight Watchers approved one but still quite interesting anyway. So let's have a look at the ingredients. So first of all, I have some lovely Scottish salmon. I've already taken the skin off the salmon just to make it nice and easy for marinating. You shouldn't really be using the skin in Weight Watchers recipes. I don't like it as it is. In fact, I quite like to kind of take it off and I'll fry it up and I'll chop it in and put it in whiskey's, whiskey the Westies dinner. We have some sweet corn. Um, I like sweet corn a lot, so I've actually doubled the recipe. It said two cobs for four people. I'm doing two cobs for one people just because I blooming love it. Um, we've got some coriander, we've got some chopped tomatoes, uh, chopped cherry tomatoes. I have my rice here, 100 grams of white rice, not the brown rice that it says here. Now this is where things get a little bit different. So for the marinade, the marinade is everything that is going to in clear uh, little little goo pots. Actually, these are upcycling my life over goo pots. So this, all of this would just be one marinade, but because I don't have the marinade, this is what I'm going to be putting into it. So I took the recipe for the marinade from BBC Good Food. Uh, I'll share the links for all of these on my, um, my little kind of information bits that go with it, depends on what social networking I'm using, okay? So what I've got, I've got, I think it's two tablespoons of light soy sauce. I have the equivalent of one lime in there, so that's a uh, lime juice, that's about a tablespoon and a half. I have some red chilies, now ideally these should be scotch bonnet chilies, but I don't have scotch bonnet chilies, I have frozen chopped uh, red chilies that, that I've just took out the freezer there, because that, and that's all I have left chilli wise. So I'll try and add a little bit of extra zing with some dried chilies and some of other, some other wee ingredients as well. I have ginger. I can't remember how much of ginger it is, it's just a bit of ginger. I've got half a half an onion. I have some allspice 
all spice i think it's just all spice um about a teaspoon of that uh, it's really one of these flavors that's really really synonymous with caribbean cooking you can make up this paste without it but it just won't taste the same so if you've got it if you can get it definitely it's a good one um, right, this is this is a wee change I've made from the Good Food website. So the Good Food website asked for uh, brown sugar, two tablespoons of brown sugar, or three tablespoons of brown sugar, can't remember. Anyway, asked for brown sugar. Um, I don't have brown sugar in the house, and um, it does, I mean, I, I know it makes such a difference to using this, and you might have different opinions about using sugar and sweetener and things like that. Because I'm doing it Weight Watchers and I'm trying to be nice and slimline and healthy, it's just half the amount of the sugar that's on the website as sweetener so i think that is about um a tablespoon and a half of sweetener that's there um i have some thyme dried or fresh is fine i've only got the dried stuff so that's what i'm using i have the remainder of my uh sibes or my spring onions uh, the recipe calls for a large bunch that is two spring onions um, and of course some garlic as well now i said there would be a a, 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 a kind of wacky ingredient included this one is definitely not weight watchers approved so i have some mango hot sauce from um, a local brewery up in glasgow disco inferno mango hot sauce which is absolutely stellar on some sausages on your barbecue so i'm going to add a little bit of that and see how i go on with that in my uh, within my marinade so my first step is really really easy it is simply take all of my marinade ingredients whack them in a food processor and blitz it up. So that's what I'm going to do just now. I like to think that this is a, a bit being a bit like a Saturday kitchen, you know, when they have all the ingredients be prepared for you. Um, but that is really just because um, I'm quite a messy cook. Um, and uh, I just don't have the space to do the video, have my recording equipment and all my um, cooking stuff like that out on my bunkers. So it's, it's a nice easy way to get myself nice and organised and think about what I'm going to say and what I'm going to do as well. So yeah, basically I'm just chucking everything in. I'm actually going to hold back a little bit of the side piece for the, the tomatoes later on just to give it a little bit of colour. But we'll come back to that. So put those side bees in. Actually, I wonder, does anybody else call spring onion sibies? I think that's maybe my mum's thing. She always used to call them sibies as well. It's a Scottish, Scottish word. So, yeah, sibies. Garlic. Um, whenever a recipe asks for, like, one clove of garlic, I always double it because I love garlic so much. Again, lovely, big, strong flavours. Some onions. I think that's another top tip I would say for you guys as well, particularly you watchers, folks, if you are wanting food quickly on the table um i love for, for certainly for things like stews curries and um marinades like this then frozen pre-chopped frozen stuff is just such a lifesaver even though i know it's locked down lots of people have got a bit more free time in their hands i'm a teacher by profession and i'm despite what the papers might tell you i'm most definitely not on holiday i'm working really really hard so um yeah quick and easy recipes are still really really important for me as well and the final unit popping in there is the lime juice so i'm gonna put this already plugged in ready to go just get it on switched on in together. Well, another thing I really think is important if you're using, certainly if you're using ingredients that you're able to do that is to try and taste your marinades when you can. It's going to give you an idea of what your flavour profile is going to be with the finished meal and what other accompaniments you might want to do to try and balance certain flavours out. So I think that's a really important thing to always taste what you've got. Plus because I'm about to add um, some extra hot sauce in there I kind of want to see what it's like to begin with before I get a bit too crazy about what I'm adding to it. Oh! Oh, it's lovely. It's got a really nice, um, it's actually quite, 
I'm surprised at how sweet that actually is. It's got a really roundy balance flavour and it is quite a bit of a kick already just with what was equivalent of about two teaspoons of red chillies in there. So depending on your taste preferences, you could leave it as it is. But as I've said before, I love, I love spicy food. So I'm going to put some of that hot sauce in there as well. About, yeah, probably about a teaspoon and a half. I don't know. I've got another wee blitz. I'm going to get it onto my salmon. Already in a bowl, nice and easy. Take that out before it falls in. And I'm just going to sling that over the top. Lovely, 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 lovely. Okay. Just get that all kind of covered up. Make sure it's. There we go. Right. Nice. At this point, um, it, the recipe recommends covering it in cling film and putting it in the fridge for 15 minutes. I don't have cling film. Partly, I've ran out and the other thing is, is I refuse to buy it because it's so bad for the environment. I'm just covering it with a plate and putting it in the fridge. So that goes in there for 15 minutes. And which gives us enough time to go on with the next steps in the ingredients. So the next thing I'm going to do is get the rice on. So, feel my top tip for foolproof rice without a rice cooker. So I have in here 100 grams of rice. Actually, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I think 50 grams of rice per person is a pretty measly amount. And I would rather eat enough for my dinner and not snack later on. So it's actually 125 grams of rice. But it's between two people. So, I've got that there. I know it's 125 grams. I've got my water, which I've pre-boiled. What I want to do is I want to have double the amount of water to the rice that I have. So, um, now, if you've got digital scales, then you can really easily just change it to the milliliter swins. And what I'd be looking for then is 250 mils of water. If you don't have digital scales, just use a measuring cup or a measuring jug, whatever, that's fine. Still would be 250. I just like keeping everything in the one space. So, what is there? We can get that on. A little bit of seasoning. When I'm making um, like curries uh, or there's Indian or Thai or whatever when I make up my rice like this I usually put in a couple of cardamom pods and a couple of cloves as well and that just gives it you, know, you don't have to use quite so much salt to get that flavour. I've got that there, give that a quick stir just to make sure it doesn't all stick together and then I'm going to bring that to the boil and let it simmer for about five seven minutes depends how fast it goes away until the water has almost disappeared and then I'm going to put a lid on the top of it, switch the heat off and let it steam for the final 10 minutes. So, before I go any further, the next step I've done is I have put a griddle pan on to heat up and I've also put my grill on, I'm just putting my grill on just now, up at high heat to warm up as well for the salmon later on. So I'm going to take my corn in the cob two because I'm greedy and I'm going to take my fry light and I'm going to give that a good wee mist over. Now I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with fry light mainly because I have been trying like the sweetener thing I've been trying to move away from eating processed ingredients as much as possible trying to, to eat whole foods and that means having healthy oils and having little bits of sugar which are more satisfying than bits of sweetener. Uh, but the bottom line is, I'm just getting a little bit stuck for some of the ingredients and fry light's just so nice and convenient, especially when it comes to misting up some uh, grilled co uh, corn like this. Okay, so I am going to get my griddle pan nice and hot and let me just double check. I'm going to get these guys on once it's really, really hot. I'm going to pop it on and I'm going to char the corn the next 10 minutes I'm going to be turning it as I go. 
Now, if like me, you would normally, you would like me normally, you would be in a position where you don't have all the ingredients be chopped. This is usually the point when I'm doing that and I'll have everything else ready to go as well. So the salmon's in the fridge, corn is getting griddled up. When that comes off, what we'll do is we'll chop it off and we'll mix it in with what's going to become like a salsa sort of situation that's there. But I'll just let the corn do its thing just now. The rice is getting to that point just now where the majority of the water, you can see the majority of the water is gone. Okay. This point. And pop the lid on. Don't be tempted to put the lid on before the water disappears, otherwise you will end up with a very messy cooker. The other thing I should have mentioned is when it comes to your grill pan, or your griddle pan, sorry, is don't oil the griddle pan. Leave that completely dry. Oil your, your food that you have. Okay, so oil that rather than the griddle pan. So I thought while I'm waiting for the corn to char, I thought I'd introduce to you some of my uh, cookbooks that I use for when I'm trying to create some of the really healthy recipes. So first thing is, this was the first uh, cookbook that I ever bought from Weight Watchers and I love it. And the reason I love it isn't just because it's really, really easy to follow and it's really straightforward. It's just that himself absolutely enjoyed every single meal that I cooked from it, even the ones like cauliflower shawarma, which I thought he'd totally turn his nose up at, demolished it. So I really enjoy this. If you can get this online, definitely get it. Um, I have also been flicking through this one here, which Elaine Costello, my Weight Watchers coach, had loaned me. Um, she loaned to me just before lockdown and I forgot to return it before things went off so I've still got it, I will give you it back. <laughs> so, um, so it's got some good recipes in there as well but to be honest with you I actually, for me I really really preferred the 30 minute ones, there was more variety of stuff in there whereas this one's quite uh, straightforward recipes which are great for some people but I like things with a bit more exotic twist to it. Oh I'm just going to twist these round because it's getting a bit, we'll get nice and char so you just you see that lovely char that's on there. Right, we're almost done. Okay. I'll put another, another three minutes on those. Um, I just bought this one. Got this with my uh, my crisps and my chocolate kind of delivery the other day. So I haven't tried any of them yet. So you might see some of these showing up later on. Some of the other ones. Now, I'm totally. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Elaine. I'm sorry. I'm totally going to push some other books here. But this guy, I totally love him. He's but he, um, his stuff, it's just, in fact, his podcasts, everything, have been really, really important to me in trying to make sense of food, my relationship with food, whole food, nutritional, nourishing food, food for really good health, things like that. It's just fabulous, absolutely fabulous. A lot of the recipes you'll see, you'll see on my staff at Dot Food account come from this fabulous man over here. And I'm just going to turn that for one last one. Um, one that I suspect many of you will have seen and heard before, the Pinch of Nom cookbook. Um, it's pretty good. But, um, it's really straightforward, easy to go, easy to cook with. And uh, the other night, um, oh these were really nice when I made those. Um, yeah, so the, the other night Brian even cooked something from it which is really, really good. So really straightforward, easy to cook from um, as well to recommend. And my new cookbook, the one that I've been cooking a lot of recently, it's not in any way, shape or form healthy, but it is damn tasty, it's my Korean cookbook as well. So these are some of the cookbooks that I'm using over lockdown. That's my corn done. I need to leave it to cool for a little bit because even me and my asbestos fingers cannot handle that corn before I start to slice it off. So I'll pop that to the side just now. In the meantime, um, I'll get my salmon ready. So it's been in the fridge for over 15 minutes and it's lovely and marinated. I would say that it's definitely better if you can leave the marinade on as long as you possibly can, like ideally overnight, because that's what they'll say. I am so bad at not doing that and then there's a few times that I do do it and the food is just so much nicer. But not very organised. Well, not as organised as I should have been, so I've only done it for the 15 minutes. We'll have to take it as it is. So I'm going to... Take the salmon, and this is the point where I show my really embarrassing grill pan. It's probably in smoky, that's why, that's why it's really embarrassing. Should clean it more often, but I loathe cleaning my oven and my grill pan. I'd rather just handle the smoke. 
Nej. Don't judge me. We've all got a grill pan like this. This is too forward, just get your salmon on the grill. Actually, I think this must be one of these kind of recipes that, that would be really good for putting on a barbecue. I'm definitely going to get a barbecue going tomorrow. Oh, that's hot. Uh, we're going to get a barbecue going tomorrow and uh, I'll cook some recipes, hopefully, and record them and put them online here as well. So it's on there and it's going into the oven, medium heat, for about eight minutes. So I'll turn it once within that eight minutes. Set it for four minutes and let that do its thing. In the meantime, my rice is still here. I am not taking the lid off because I want to keep that steam going there. I will only take that off at the very last possible minute. Right, these are just about... I can touch them inside, so I'll get my knife. My lovely sharp knife. And... Show you what I'm doing. There we go. I'm just... Slicing the corn off. The idea what you're looking for is rather than having like individual bits of corn that you're getting these chunks of corn like that and it just gives that nice texture and something a bit more interesting going on than just some corn, frozen sweet corn. Another reason I'm using two is because the when my Tesco delivery came with my sweet corn in the cobs, these were the rattiest tiniest corn in the cobs I've ever seen. So since it's a free food, well it's free for me, one blue, I thought I might as well have a bit more of it. So I'm going to make up my tomato salad just now. So I have my chopped tomatoes. Uh, the recipe calls for cherry tomatoes. I don't like cherry tomatoes as much. I prefer the, um, oh what would you call them? I totally forgot what they're called. The wee ones as well. They're a wee bit longer. Plum tomatoes, that's it. Baby plum tomatoes. So plum, baby plum tomatoes. Um, the recipe calls for two saibis. I didn't have two saibis. I just scraped off a few from the, the marinade. So I'm chucking them in a wee bowl. This is why having extra corn is quite good. I'm going to put my corn in the bowl. And some uh, coriander. Now the recipe I don't think calls for coriander, but I decided to put it in since there was going to be no green from the real green from the sibies. Thought it would give that real nice visual contrast. Okay. Just give you a bit more for garnishing the top. And um, it asks for two tablespoons of lime juice. Given I'm doing half mounts, just one. I could dig out a tablespoon. I'm just going to use a cap. Cap's about. That's about it. There we go. This is the point where I probably should have had the tablespoon for me to use one anyway. Okay. Just give it a nice wee star. Look at those lovely colours. I'm looking forward to eating this. It's fun. So that's the salmon done. I'm just going to turn my grill off, open it up so it doesn't overcook just now. I'm going to make up my rice. You can see I've just taken that off. Got the amount of steam that's coming in. It's lovely and warm still. Give that a wee fluffy fluff up. I'm going to add some coriander. That's frozen coriander. It's not very nice for garnishing, but it's great for dipping in with your rice. A little bit more lime juice. I think it's, I can't remember how much it is. I'm just going to estimate here. Give it a start. Let's see, that is looking, oh, it smells lovely. Really, really fragrant. So, let's get this spooned on. There we go. I'm not one for great presentations, so just have to be with me.
Okay, so the recipe says to break up the salmon um, and put it on top with the salad. So I'm, I'm kind of just guessing what the best way to do with this. So I think salad first, then salmon? No, that's, we'll, go, we'll go salmon first. Salmon first on the rice because salmon and rice are hot. And I'm not going to break it up because, you know, I do all this effort to try and keep it in the one. Yeah, I'll break it up a wee bit. One piece. There we go. Oh man, that's so good. Yeah, I think we're going to have to break this up a bit. It'll look weird otherwise. We'll just. Don't even see this. Put it in a couple of big chunks. There we go. As I say, presentation is not my forte. There we go. And salad on top. How good does that look? 